Hello and welcome to another midweek edition of the Championship Predictions from the Honest Sport Podcast. I'm Craig Savage and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. We'll do the recap of the weekend's action and obviously this one in the penultimate Championship Weekly Predictions. But we've got four games. We'll start off with Barnsley versus Blackpool. Well, Barnsley now relegated and managerless. They lost 2 1 to Huddersfield on Friday night. Blackpool drew 1 0 with Luton. Well, I'll do your plug for you first, Craig, because uh, the Barnsley manager special will be somewhere in the eye above. Uh, I watched Luton Blackpool on, uh, at the ground. You obviously will have seen it. It was televised, but it, it wasn't a great game. It was two sides that didn't do a huge amount to win the game. There was lots of scrappiness, but ultimately, despite Blackpool maybe just edging it in terms of open play, they were very fortunate because Richard Keogh in the last minute got the softest free kick I think we'll ever see. Ultimately, otherwise, Blackpool were themselves away from home. They were solid. They were fairly disciplined. They attacked at speed on the counter-attack. A um, bit surprised that Josh Bowler didn't start, but he came on and po- arguably should have had a penalty himself at the end as well. They carried a threat on the counter, and they're always going to be a solid side. So another one all away draw for them. A perfect score for me, which was nice. We'll see that next weekend. Barnsley... I'm not going to keep going over it because we talked in the summer about what we thought of the managerial appointment and what it obviously led to. Hoyer then came in with too much to do and wasn't really able to do it. They lost so much quality out their side last summer in the likes of Mauer, in the likes of DK, in the likes of most of their coaching team. And it's just too much of a battle. I'm just hoping they can get up to 23rd so I get three points in our season predictions. But for this game, it's hard to know if there's going to be a reaction now because Barnsley will be playing with freedom. Uh, Martin Devaney's going to be in charge. I think they might win it because it's the way this always works, isn't it? They've got nothing to play for. There's no pressure. Blackpool have got nothing to play for either. They've had a solid season. I'm going to go against all odds, 3-1 Barnsley. There's no explanation behind that. Um, I'm going to go for a 2-0 Blackpool win. It's, it's just been a disastrous season for Barnsley. Um, Blackpool, they've had, yeah, obviously they, they were right. They were fine. Nothing special. Uh, CJ Hammond, probably their best player. Could have had an extra, they could have gave away a penalty themselves. Anderson on Snodgrass, which was a bit, which which was very clumsy. And then they, they disallowed goal right at the end, Hilarious. which it's her, horrendously bad. End of the day, I think the point was probably a good, is it a fair result of Luton Blackpool it wasn't a, I said wasn't a great game. Felt like an end of season game for nothing to play for, even though Luton had something rinded on it. But no, it was a solid away performance for Blackpool. But I think they'll get three points here. I'm going by two goals to nil. Right, big game, big big game. Already promoted Fulham. They're at home to Nottingham Forest, chasing that second spot. Uh, Fulham drew one with Bournemouth, and Nottingham Forest beat Peter Rowe by a goal to nil. Big away win. There wasn't a huge amount of quality in the Peterborough Forest game, but the ball from Brennan Johnson and the header back where it came from, from Sam Surridge, was just delightful. It was worthy of winning the match. Very different to the uh, Jack Colback strike on the Monday night, but all as effective and a good three points for them. Obviously relegated Peterborough at the same time. Fulham, well, it was just carnage, wasn't it? It was a dirty game. There were loads of fouls. There were loads of flare-ups. Obviously, culminating in Dominic Solanke's 98th minute penalty, Marco Silva going absolutely mad and getting sent off. So, with him suspended, with Forrest in the form of their lives, I mean, take out the Luton game, they've been invincible for ages. I know Fulham haven't wrapped up the title yet, but they're going to because Bournemouth won't win all their games. I think Forrest win it because there's more riding on it for them. It's as simple as that. I don't see many people stopping them. Certainly not teams that try to be expansive, but they're not going to keep the clean sheet that they normally do. So I'm going to go 2-1 to Forrest. I'm still predicting that they'll catch Bournemouth. This is a toughie, real toughie. Forrest are doing fine. Fulham got the job done, but Fulham do tend to concede goals. You think a team that wins the league, you think, yeah, they're going to keep loads of clean sheets and loads of... But it's not as obvious as you make it out. They do concede the, the odd goal here and there. And obviously, concede in the 90th minute sucks. But what can you do, really? It's, it's a stupid challenge by Harry yeah. Wilson anyway, um, especially that late in the game. Once again, I moan about Swansea with game management. I'm going to moan about Fulham now with game management. Forrest have obviously got more pressure on them because obviously they're still riding, going for that automatic spot. I think they're going to do it by the odd goal. So I'm going to go 1-0 to Nottingham Forest. By the way, Craig, that might have been the closest goal line technology decision I've ever seen. 
do you know, I don't think that looked like it went over the line. It didn't look it, did it? No. It was really weird. <laughs> It must be like literally an inch because that didn't look over the line. I know obviously the guideline technology is, is a fantastic. I think it's probably one of the best things we've had yeah. in the last 10, 11 years. Um, but there was that, there was some form of optical illusion going on there. <laughs> that didn't look over the line. I'll be I'll be brutally honest. And it's not being biased to Fulham or anything like that, or, or Bournemouth. It's it just didn't look over the line from the camera angle, but the watch said so. So there you go. Uh right, next up Swansea versus Bournemouth at the Swansea.com. Uh, Swansea, they drew one all with Middlesbrough and Bournemouth obviously drew one all with Fulham. Well, given uh, your calm introduction to this fixture, Craig, I'm going to guess that you haven't seen the goal that Swansea conceded against Middlesbrough because no. the goalkeeper gave it away playing out from the back. Um, well, you you, you carry on talking finish. why I watch it. <laughs> it was a great finish from 30 yards by McGree or 25 yards, but the manner of it was just, it was so Swansea and you will be furious. And you'll see Craig's head in hands moment in a second. Bournemouth, obviously, we mentioned with the Fulham game, the late comeback, the late penalty. It was a a very chaotic game. And look, Bournemouth are still big favourites for that promotion spot. But if we get to that Forest game and there's still something to play for, it is going to be so nervy. So Bournemouth have to win. Away from home, they generally do do a bit better. They drew 0-0 at Sheffield United, but beat Coventry recently. Do we get the big Bournemouth display? I don't know. I'm going to go for two apiece. I think we're going to get a thriller, and I think we're going to get defensive mistakes. And Craig, you saw the little little slight grimace of disappointment there. What? It, just get up the field. And to be fair, I don't. I can't really blame the keeper because it's actually the uh, whoever passed it straight to him. That score for Millsborough. So, yeah, once again, another defensive mistake for Swansea. And I don't know how many more times I have to talk about how bad Swansea are playing out from the back. But they got the point in the day. Uh, knocks Millsborough's playoff chances. Uh, we'll get on to that in a second. Bournemouth, I thought they got obviously very desperate uh, hearing that Forest were winning. And then obviously got the break with the penalty. So, it's still in their hands in a way because obviously they're still going to play Mills, uh, they're still going to play Nottingham Forest next week. But I think I'm going to go for a Swansea win despite me criticising them from playing at the back, but Bournemouth do play out from the back themselves. I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for a one nil victory for Swansea. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. We've seen, it in, we've seen it in league one, the same thing's happening. The top three just keep losing. And the final game is Middlesbrough versus Cardiff at the Riverside Stadium. Uh, Middlesbrough drew one with Swansea, as we just said, and Cardiff lost one nil to Sheffield United. Yeah. Disappointing result for Cardiff, but it's, it's very hard at this stage of the season, nothing to play for. Sheffield United obviously had everything to play for. And look, we've seen some of Cardiff's defending recently. To only concede one goal in each of the last two games is probably a positive. But as we saw against Luton, it's just managing those game situations. And I mean, you talked about it with Swansea. Those sides that are in the the top half or the bottom half, that's probably been the difference this season, isn't it? Is managing games in those situations. But ultimately, Sheffield United edged the game and got the win. Borough at Swansea, we mentioned Borough gifted a goal. Crazy start to the second half, but it it just sums up Borough in recent weeks that after scoring that goal, to then concede two minutes later, to give it away when if they'd won it, they would have had the playoffs basically in their hands if they'd then won this game in hand. It's so frustrating, but they didn't offer enough. They only had 25% of the ball against Swansea, which we see with a lot of sides, but if you're chasing the ball all day, then you're playing midweek when most teams aren't. I wonder if that will be a hindrance as well. So I think Middlesbrough will win this game. They're a better side at home. We know that Cardiff have been in poor form, but I still don't think it will be enough. I'm going to go for a, an edgy, scraped 2-0 victory with the second goal coming late on the counter. And that's what Craig was going for. Yeah, I was going to go 2-0 Middlesbrough. I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go 3-1 instead Millsbury's form is completely out of whack now they really don't want to be in the playoffs as that looks like but I think they're happy with the two FA Cup wins Cardiff obviously the season's done they've been done for ages it's just been totally out of form changes are needed probably at Cardiff as well probably a lot of a clear out see what Steve Morrison wants to bring in but yeah Millsbury I think they'll be comfortable 3-1 win Let's have a quick recap of what we predicted for this midweek. And in my side of the predictions, clean sheets for Blackpool, Forest and Swansea. And a comfortable Middlesbrough win. And Dan Cody's side of it, a draw between uh, Swansea and Bournemouth. A winner for Forest away from home, but home wins for Barnsley and Middlesbrough. 
And those are predictions for this week's action in the championship. Do you agree with us or disagree with us? Let us know in the comments down below and give us your predictions. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Book Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Book for free. And we'll see you next time.